You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode. Exciting news. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who have been telling Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at OklahomaHOF.com and then definitely follow them on Instagram for all the information that you need because I'm sure that's where you follow us as well at OklahomaHOF. Let's get into today's episode. But down here with Jeremiah Lane, who is the assistant director of the Children's Hospital Foundation. Appreciate your time, mate. We've, yeah. we've been trying to do this for a while, haven't we? Yeah, we've been trying to connect. You know, uh, been busy schedules, but yeah. uh, thankful to be on and be able to do the uh, podcast with you today. Yeah, after uh, we played well, you invited me to play the golf tournament down in Belmar last year. Uh, we had a great day for that. Oh, it was beautiful outside. Um, it was great to put in 18 holes and yeah. get to play and raise some money so yeah and that's kind fun. of that's kind of when i was first i guess made aware of you know of everything you do and just being around the golf day and hearing you speak and and the other people involved super interesting stuff you guys i didn't realize all the stuff that you do yeah we do a lot of different things um obviously nonprofits. it's it's mm-hmm. kind of an octopus and we're in different areas but um you know golf tournaments is one or one of our ways to raise money and we have a lot of different organizations that put on golf tournaments and other events so yeah mm-hmm. you know we we appreciate you coming out and playing and learning a little bit about us it's uh it's like it must be the best way to raise money just having people out at a golf tournament <laughs> right because they're out there for four or five hours you know like they've taken the day off they've they, they're out to enjoy themselves yeah you know most of our supporters that go out and play golf that's one of their most favorite things is just being able to take the day off of work mm-hmm. and go and you know help out a charity uh, it's one of my favorite things because i'm normally in the office grinding and it's a day that i can get out get on the golf course enjoy some time with our board members or our donors yeah. and uh, you know ha- not have to worry about the emails yeah um and everything constantly flowing in so so you've been uh you grew up in oklahoma city grew up right in bethany oklahoma yeah um, went to Putnam City West and Western Oaks Middle School mm-hmm. and uh, have, you know went to college at Oklahoma State University but never moved anywhere else yeah you know I've been born and raised in Oklahoma I love the state so and then so where you're on now was this like job straight out of college or is this kind of like this net? yeah so um, you know I came I came to the Children's Hospital Foundation right out of college uh, I was a communications um, assistant and I worked here for about a year and a half mm-hmm. and then I uh, right when before my wife and I got married I took two years and went and did sales um, and I traveled six different states and and, and did some um, HVAC um, sales and sold heating and air equipment and things like that yeah and then when we found out we were expecting a little one I said man it's it's time to get off the road I need, <laughs> I need, I need to, to come home, home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you know I've I've really always loved nonprofit work and okay. um, I enjoyed the sales man and that two years of experience taught me everything to really be able to excel whenever I came back. Right. So I went from a communications role into uh, more of the assistant director role and kind of over, overarching, you know, as far as donor stewardship and kind of how you work with major donors. And mm-hmm. I took a lot of that sales experience and, and made it more donor centric. Yeah. And it, it's really interesting. I mean, we are salesmen. Uh, we got to sell our organization and sell what we're doing. And so, man, it, it's been awesome. But yeah, right out of college, um, came here for my first year and a half and then um, spent two years away, but I've been back for three years. So Yeah. What was uh, what was Oklahoma State like? Man, it is fun. It's a, di- <laughs> it's a different atmosphere. You know, I've been... I've been to other colleges and, um, you know, obviously we have this battle rivalry and everyone talks about how bad OU and OSU is against one another. OU has its perks, but man, being in Stillwater, it's just a whole different atmosphere. Game day, um, you have all these fans that they don't care if you're from Nebraska, South Dakota, Missouri, they embrace you and they'll ask you, hey, you want to have a beer? You want to have some barbecue? Win or lose, mm-hmm. right? And, and so uh, you see a lot of articles written about Stillwater after people come visit, and they're like, "Man, the fan experience is is amazing." Yeah. Uh, but I had a lot of fun up there. Um, my brothers and my, my whole family went there, um, and so I've grown up ever since I was you know little going to games, and I got to see uh, OSU basketball go to the Final Four and see Eddie Sutton coach, and um, you know hang out with those Final Four guys, and so I had a lot of fun uh, up in Stillwater and. It's just a totally different atmosphere. Yeah. That's kind of something I was kind of thrown into, like, 
with friends and stuff, you know, like go to your first game and you're like, this is not real life, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. then, and then you keep going back and you're like, this is, and then, you know, I got lucky to go to some basketball games as well. And I didn't get to see, you know, coach Sutton do his thing, but been around some of the games and it's just one atmosphere. Man, and you know, I think a lot of it has to do with, yeah, there's a winning tradition at OSU. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's the wrestling and golf, obviously. But yeah. when you go and you look at basketball and football and you experience a game, there's a lot of highs and lows. And I think that's what we appreciate as fans is, you know, we're, we come in and we're like, man, we're not always expecting to win. But when we do and we pull off those victories, it's like bittersweet. Yeah. And it makes you even be like, you know, more of a fan. And so, um, but yeah, it, it is something really whenever we talk about the loyal and true mm -hmm. it really is man you talk to anybody yeah we you know we have some seasons where we may suck at football or suck at basketball but we're still there the right. fan base is there um and it, if you ever get a chance to go to bedlam wrestling up in stillwater i was just there this past weekend yeah and the atmosphere for wrestling Man, it, there's there's none like it. Really? Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah, I haven't it, been to a wrestling. It match. was it, the third. So they they had to open up the top section because that's how full it was. Wow. And it was loud. Um, there was a. I think there was more people that attended that game than the basketball game. Yeah. Um, that week. So, but um, yeah, man, wrestling at OSU. If you've never been to a match, you got to get up there just to experience the atmosphere. Yeah. So obviously, great time. I mean, getting to see Coach Sutton do his thing and go to the be you know hang out with the final four team and stuff like that that's a pretty cool experience and a great memory dude we've got to put him in yeah. there's no reason that he's not in the hall of fame yes. everyone keeps i mean it's it's one of the biggest arguments you you know i it's really interesting i've been looking at twitter and stuff lately and there was just a girls basketball game up there and mm -hmm. baylor was there and kim mulkey even said yeah you know she's up against him and she yeah. said you got to put him in it, you know you have friend for who's out there and he's saying yeah. hey put him in and all these people are saying it's yeah. absurd i mean yeah. i get it he had his mistakes i don't think you can hold it against him i mean right. he's one of the most winning coaches in, in national basketball yeah so uh in coll collegiate basketball so like i said I, I think there's there's no reason that he shouldn't be in we got to put him in yeah i sure. not i agree with you um so what i guess what why why come here straight out of college? So I, uh, my uncle was a Walmart employee um, for over 20 years. And so growing up, um, Walmart is one of our national sponsors through Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, I always went to his events that he was helping raise funds for us. And so, man, I've been, if you look at it, I started that at a young age of maybe 11 or 12. So... And through that experience, I really learned that I wanted to be a part of this organization. Mm -hmm. It meant a lot to me. Um, and so from that time, I interned right before I went to college. I was a communications intern here. I went to OSU and I started what's called Cowboy-thon, which is a dance okay. marathon up there. Um, and so for 12 hours, it's straight dancing and stuff like that. And, we, and, and you fundraise throughout the year. Um, and so... I was approached, whenever I went up there, I was approached by the foundation to start the program. And OU has one, and right now they raise about a million dollars a year for us. Wow. Um, yeah. That's great. I mean, it's they're, it's amazing. They are one of the top 10 dance marathons in the country. And so through that experience, um, I learned that I really want to be able to give back and do what I'm doing. So um, I started Cowboy Thon up there. And literally right after college, um, I called and I said, hey, can I put in my application? I'd love to work at the foundation. Yeah. And uh, it was a blessing to be here. And um, I love it. What we do really allows me to feel rewarded on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And um, growing up, I've always wanted to give back to the community. We didn't have a lot whenever we grew up. We were a single family. Mom raised, you know, four of us. Um, and so, but she always gave us, you know, what we needed and made sure that we had what we needed or what we, I guess you could say what we wanted. Right. Um, but you know, there's some kids that aren't even fortunate enough to be able to have health care. And so one thing that is important to me is being able to give back to my community and making sure that, you know, mm. I'm doing that on a daily basis. And yeah. Thankfully I can do that with work. Right. Cause some of the stuff that, you know, and we, we've spoken about this just kind of recently about, you know, having which is, I mean, how we met really is Taryn, my wife's brother, is one of your really good friends. Yeah. Robert, my brother-in-law, is one of your really good friends is how we met. And, you know, like the stuff, that the impact that you guys have. And, you know, he was up recently this weekend. We were chatting about some stuff. And 
again, like, I, and I played in the golf tournament, I know kind of what you guys do. And then we sit down and we talk more detail and like, whoa, you do that too. And this as well. And then you realize the impact and you realize why people want to give you money. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's not like just another, you know, foundation. That, oh, I'm just going to give money because it makes me feel good. No, like you see the impact that you're having with these kids yeah, and everything do. else. You know? uh, and so what's really special here is we have a program um, for our employees and, you know, we have a program called the Miracle Children and uh, Grateful Families Program. And so every child treated at the Children's Hospital in Oklahoma City um, is able to join our program. It's free. Mm-hmm. We don't ask them for money. Um, other Grateful Family programs in different hospitals do ask you know, their patients for money and things like that. It's not something we're interested in. So what we allow them to do is about four times a year, we, we, post, we host events and we invite all these families out to be able to be a community. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not fighting these battles to get uh, alone you know this is a, a sense of community they can go last one we did was at the zoo and we had everyone go to the zoo and um you know we've done things at the science museum or we'll have them come and do valentine's day party here and we do cupcakes and mm-hmm. they design cards and stuff like that but it's a sense of community but for us that's the impact because two or three months ago their story came to us and they were in a totally different position right and for the donors that have given us money, uh, we brought in specialists and physicians and research scientists to be able to come in and treat these kids. And so to be able to see them on the other side of the hospital bed, thriving, running, mm-hmm. chasing other kids, that's the impact. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's why we're thankful for our donors because they truly are impacting the kids of Oklahoma and outlying states because we care for kids outside the state as well. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so we are the state's comprehensive hospital, um, so we have all the specialties that we need. And if we don't, we're recruiting the doctors to be here for those Mm -hmm. specialties. Um, But like last year alone, we had over 268,000 patient encounters. Um, That is just in our 77 counties alone. Wow. Um, So we have kids that uh, we, we have the only pediatric dialysis unit. So if a kid needs to be on dialysis, yeah. um, they're traveling here to receive um, treatment. And, and remember, we're, like, we're talking about kids that may be two and a half, three hours away. They have to receive dialysis treatment three times mm-hmm. a week. So you're looking at a six hour trip back and forth, four hours on dialysis. Yeah. That's 10 hours a day. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, we're, we, we are the state's only one, but we serve kids in Arkansas, Kansas, and outlying states. Um, we just recruited Dr. Burkhart. He's a pediatric cardiac thoracic surgeon. Uh, Brandon Whedon is helping mm-hmm. uh, raise funds for that, and his golf tournament's coming up in June. But Dr. Burkhart, we're getting kids from out of state so he can perform surgeries on yeah. them. I mean, he's, you know, he's that good. Yeah. And so uh, thankfully to Brandon's credit and, and the um, Children's Hospital Foundation where we were able to help successfully recruit him to come here and care for our kids. Um, so all these different specialties. Right. And, and um, with that being said, you know, the state has something special here and everyone needs to know about it. And we're raising the funds to be able to support the doctors and the research that they're doing here. Yeah. So that that's a lot of it too, is like raising the money to bring the doctors in so we, you can have this facility and have this, these yeah, people here. And, and so when we talk about that, you know, a lot of things that we're doing to raise funds is supporting the, the research. So right. say that, you know, we're raising an a million, $2 million endowment. The, what the support that they're getting from us is the interest off of that endowment. Got you. But a lot of the, you know, what's attractive to them is, man, I can get research funding from you or research startup and help bring a team. And, um, so we support other, you know, all the different programs within the department of pediatrics here at at OUHSC. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, what we're trying to do is raise, raise money for that. So our, our mission statement, um, and, and prices and, you know, basically ties in three things, which is clinical care, education, and research. And um, there are things that, you know, we, we support outside of those things. If the hospital needs it, such as like a DNA sequencer, we've done, um, you know, a pea pod to study the um, body, the body fat or the um, body fat rate of mm-hmm. a newborn or, you know, infants or whatnot. So it's really interesting, um, you know, what we do. And there's a lot of things that we do and we're raising a lot of money and um the donors help us do that yeah i guess what's been you know one of the things because you've probably been here almost 10 years 10 no, years I'm, no i'm about to hit like six. Oh, okay with the yep. two years I mean, out I, okay um i'm only 28 years old ah 
Okay. Yeah, I'm, of course I'm you are. You're Armitage. I'm, yeah. <laughs> My apologies. Yep. So. Um, with obviously, so with being here that long, you've seen everything grow. I mean, we just mentioned you just got done finishing the website. It looks fantastic, by Thank the you. way. Thank you. Um, that. And for everyone listening, you can go to chfkids.com and see that and find out all the information you need and donate and stuff like that. Um, what for you is like, because I'm sure there's so many things that like make you want to come to work every day, right? Yeah. You do, you don't just, there's, I'm sure there's little things that you're like, oh, do I have to do that today? Admin yeah. work, paperwork, everyone has to do that. But is there one thing that stands out to you? And I know that's probably a really hard question. You know, a lot of people ask me, um, one of the most impactful things that has happened on this job. And I can say, um, whenever I was up in Stillwater and I was doing Cowboy Thon, I met a little boy named Jace. He's from Enid. And he has a diagnosis of what's called uh, galactotosisemia. And he's mm-hmm. not able to um, basically break down galactose. And his mom um, told a story. And basically, whenever he was born, you know, newborn mo- or new moms are said to breastfeed. Okay. You know, breastfeed your child, breastfeed your child. And Jace was getting really, really sick, and they didn't know what was going on. And we had just um, – we had a doctor here that she was sent to, and um, basically what it came down to was he called her and said, you've got to quit breastfeeding. You're killing your child. Wow. And what he was – he wasn't able to produce the breast milk or, you know, properly receive the breast milk mm-hmm. that he was uh, receiving from her. But just to hear the impact that she had – um, and I was able to interact with him while I was up at OSU and we, you know, during our event and, uh, whenever and my wife and I were talking about kids names, I said, I want to name my kid Jace. Yeah. And so that's why our so first son is named Jace. Yeah. Um, it's spelled differently, but, um, that is why we named him Jace is just because of the lifelong impact that I've had. And that was really the first story that hit home, you know, when yeah. I was young, younger and I did the communications intern here and I had been volunteering ever since I was younger. Um, there wasn't really one thing that impacted me, mm-hmm. but to hear, um, I guess it was that, you know, proximity of I'm at OSU, they're from Enid, they're OSU fans. I'm doing this. And it was that first impactful story that I heard. Um, and so that was the one that was my most impactful, mm-hmm. obviously, but the amount of stories that you hear, um, Man, I mean, it, it, it's just so much fun to hear the story, the success, the success stories. Obviously, there's sad sure. stories where yeah. kids are, um, you know, we're not there yet with uh, defeating childhood cancer. Um, and that's one of our missions and something that we'll be pushing here really, mm-hmm. really soon is raising more money for our childhood cancer program. But to hear all the stories of these kids and then see them running around and being able to visit with them, that's the impact. Yeah. Um, and my own son has been treated. Um, and so, and my, my niece and my nephew, and what's really interesting about it, you know, we're, we're trying to do a better job is a lot of people don't know about this hospital. That children's hospital is the state's hospital for comprehensive care and specialty. Um, so whenever my nephew got hurt or my niece got hurt, my brother was like, I'm taking her to mercy. I was like, cool. You're an admin. (laughs) Take her to mercy. Sure. Well, my brother ended up calling me and was like, hey, it's taking a little while. We're just going to go to Children's. And they went to Children's. They had a great experience. Next thing you know, my nephew needs help, and they're going, okay, we're taking them to Children's. Yeah. And so what I think you do is you realize that not a lot of people know about Children's Hospital and what, it, what the specialties it has and how good it really is. Yeah. I mean, this is a gem of the state. Um, and so what we're trying to do is kind of you know help generate that um, – atmosphere of people knowing sure. that this is a great place this is where people can be cared for and especially our kids um so yeah it's just it's just interesting because you know i, I myself wouldn't have known this is you know the best place for kids yeah to receive care. same like you 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 know you don't drive by it every day it's no. not on the highway like you know baptist is or right. mercy is off you know it's you just don't you just see those two and you think oh that's the only two that i can go to right right you never think that you know, that this is where it is. Well, and a lot of those hospitals are going to defer kids here. If gotcha. they can't care for them, they're coming here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for instance, this is the highest level NICU in the state of Oklahoma. So if a kid can't, if it, a newborn cannot be cared for at one of those hospitals, 
they're going to transfer them here or they're going to go to out of state. Right. Um, but you know, for instance, my, my brother just had my niece. I mean, my niece just had RSV and he went to a community hospital and they said, she's got to be rushed to children's. Yeah. And so my brother called me and it was about 11 o'clock and I said, okay, I'll call the ER. I'll let them know that you're on your way. Yeah. Um, and they got them in and they spent four days here. Um, you know, but they cannot say enough about the great quality of care that Mm -hmm. uh, she received while she was here. Yeah. And that, that must, you know, make you just love what you do. Right. Cause initially, you know, when, before you had Jace and before family had kids and and they'd come here, you know, you, you still love what you did, but now you have such a personal connection to it that it makes it, you know, I, it's not work really is it it's like coming in and making a real impact it's not like che- you know cashing in a check you coming in you work nine to five you get your 40 hours in and then you go on home oh man if you think i'm just cashing in <laughs> you know <laughs> right um. and i can see that in the way that you speak about it and i also see that in the way that you've spoken about it when we've been interacting with friends and family and yeah. it's not like out of work saying like where we are today in the office talking about it like this is not just you you speak this all the time. Yeah, I do. This is this is fun for me. Um, you know, going out and being able to tell people what we have and being the impact is what makes it fun. But yeah, man, if I could, if I was working forty hours a week, we'd be great. Um, <laughs> I wake up about five twenty in the morning. Yeah, and I take Jace to work, and I'm in the, I'm or to school, and I'm here by at least seven. Um, and then, you know, I leave at three to go pick them up or whatnot. But mm-hmm. I, uh, normally right after dinner, I'm back to the grind, checking yeah. emails, looking at everything. I go to bed around 11 midnight. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, it, it is, it's truly something that if you look at our staff, they are putting in more than 40 hours a week. We have over, I would say more than 350 events a year. Um, all of our national partners do small events, yeah. and our employees have to be at those events, and we help coordinate those events. Um, but we're always trying to grow. So we uh, a couple of years ago, we went into a strategic planning uh, vision, and mm-hmm. we wanted to grow from a $5 million um, organization to a $10 million organization over five years. I could say that we're on track to do that. Um, but that means that we, as a staff, have to grind, and we've sure. got to get there, and we've got to grow. So if you would have looked at this place two years ago, two and a half years ago, there would have been 12 employees, um, and we were raising maybe $3 million to $4 million. Mm-hmm. Now there's 25 employees, and we're raising seven and a half to eight, um, which is great. Yeah. You know, we're having a better impact on the state. We're raising more money. We're supporting the hospital and the, the physicians over there. We're recruiting more doctors. Um, right now we have 36 established endowed chairs, those average of two mm-hmm. to $3 million per ch- endowed chair. So right there, you're looking yeah. at what $72 million that we have there. Um, and so, like I said, our, our mission is to raise money and we're doing that. Um, we're out in the community, we're, we're beating the streets mm-hmm. and we are, um, finding donors, but you know, it's really interesting because you don't know the impact that you have until you, you see it. Right. And so, um, you know, we do donor tours all the time of the hospital and we try to bring, um, you know, different donors or individuals that have interest mm-hmm. to all of our events. And we do some pretty big events. One, two of them are dancing for a miracle. Okay. Man, that one's fun. It's, it's kind of a spinoff of dancing with the stars. Yeah. So we take 10 local celebrities and pair them with professional dancers. Sure. And, they compete against one another, but it's a fundraising competition. So whoever re- raises the most money is the end up, you know, ends up being the Dancing for a Miracle stars. Last year we had um, an individual named Lisa Talley from Norman who raised two, more than two hundred twenty thousand dollars by herself. Wow, that yeah, that's impressive Unreal. stuff. Unreal. Um, but that's a really cool event. It happens in August down at the Embassy Suites in Norman. Um, you can go to our website, look for it. it uh-huh. It's one of our I mean, it is one of the funnest events. I'm looking at the pictures now on the website. It looks like you have an absolute blast. <laughs> <laughs> we do. It, it's fun. There's about a thousand people there, um, and there's a live auction, silent auction, um, people's choice voting, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's a blast. It's um, 
yeah, I mean, if you ever want to come, just let me know. Mike. And it, we'll, yeah, we'll and that would be awesome. And it, and it's for you know, just looking at the event, it's for all ages too. It is. Um, so why well, say that? There's no kids here, right? But it's more like all ages of yeah, adults. Yeah. So anyone, you know, there's alcohol there, but anyone yeah. over the age of 16 and up would enjoy the event. Yeah. Um, one year we did do Disney themed, so all the dances were Disney themed, and so some of the you know the dancers brought their their family and yeah. younger kids to to do that. This year's Broadway ish. Okay. So it's gonna have a Broadway um a spin to it. It'll be really cool working on all the uh save the dates and all the sponsorship packets and yeah. all that right now. So what are some you mentioned three hundred and fifty events. That's that's a lot of events. Yeah. Uh what are some of the, you know, that's kinda of, that was quite one of the one of the big ones. What are some of the just the you know, like your every week like yeah. What's kind of the small ones that people so can really, like, you know, get into? Our Tinker Federal Credit Unions do car shows. Okay. They do um, – some of our partners do golf tournaments, like mm-hmm. I mentioned. Um, so we have, like, Enterprise, who you went and played in that golf tournament yeah. down in Belmar. Um, we have – the Oklahoma Cattlemen's Association does what's called the Ranch Rodeo. Okay. And it's at uh, the Lazy E, and it's just a yeah. rodeo that helps raise money. Um, there's sugars and spurs, which is another one, uh, where people will go and buy some treats and stuff like that at one of our local, uh, credit unions, but all these events, uh, Oh, one of my favorites is the clay shoot. So the Edmund Kiwanis club sponsors uh-huh. the clay shoot. It's up at uh, Silverleaf shotgun sports. And it's just a day where we go out and we shoot clays with shotguns and, eat some really good food and hang out. Um, and that's a really fun event yeah. too. So, you know, when I say that we were doing 350 events, it's a lot of our partners that are doing it, but we support it. We Great. go out there, we get, we find individuals that want to support those different areas. And what we're really trying to do is reach different people with different things. Yeah. So you have shotgun sports yet. We do quail hunts. We do, um, golf tournaments mm-hmm. and then car shows and you and, name it and the money's raised the from the entry fees to that and like a raffle at the same time like that's kind of where you raise the money from yeah yeah, yeah. so it's entry fees it's uh sponsorships right um raffles all that kind of and stuff. that's i got that's the one thing that's great about fundraising is because you can have an event you can all like go out you can do something that you love to do right like i would love to go clay shooting i'm terrible at it but I would love to go. And you can enjoy, you know, you can go and have something, you can go to a car show, or whatever it is. There's guaranteed there's an event around what you love doing that benefits this. Yeah. Which and if is there's awesome. Not, call us, we'll, we'll have yeah. set one up. Okay, so is, <laughs> and it, yeah, is that something that like people can like set up their own events and be a fit? Yeah, how, how does so, that work? Uh, we actually, on our website, we have how you can help mm-hmm. um, or get involved. And there's a third party events section there. Okay. You can download the form. And we had um, a group of individuals that wanted to do a runway fashion show. And mm-hmm. they, so they just ended up making their own committee and they did it and found sponsors. And so there's a way that people can do their own third party event. Yeah. Um, it has to be approved by us to be able to use our logo and our marketing and sure. stuff like that. But yeah, man, um, we have a, a, a family whose daughter was treated maybe 10 years ago. And they called us a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, we want to do a Jeep run up at uh, Lake Carl Blackwell. And we're going to charge everyone to do an entry, but we want you guys to be the beneficiary. Like, what do I need to do? Like Jeep Wrangler, Jeep yeah. runs. Like They're just, just driving through just the woods. Just driving Jeeps. Great. And and people, I guess, pay you know 150 bucks to be a part of this Jeep, Jeep yeah. run. Yeah. And they raise money. And so they decided that they wanted us to be the beneficiary. And so we had a kid that's designing their shirt and mm-hmm. – you know, kind of stuff like that to make it more impactful. But anybody can do something for us. Heck, we've had people call and say, in lieu of birthday gifts, our kid wants to raise money for you guys. What does that look like? Yeah. Said, okay, tell them they're raising money for us. We'll do a check presentation at the hospital. The kid can come down. Yeah. We'll get them a big printed check, make them feel good, and thank them for their time and, yeah. and what they do. And so, um, you know, there's so many different ways to give back nowadays. And that's what's really cool about philanthropy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... You know, one one thing that we started and what we kind of how we look for our donors is we started breaking it down to where how can we get lifelong donors? Sure. And so I mentioned the kids and we started a program in elementary schools called Kids Care. And it's a week long program uh, that we do in elementary schools. And it's just basically kids bringing mm-hmm. in money. So there's things like pennies for PQ, um, you know, uh, Tuesday, maybe dime for diabetes, things like that. And so yeah. there is money. And that goes in elementary and middle school. And then in high school, we try to get them to do mini marathons, kind of like the dance marathons sure. in colleges. And we get them hooked in there. And then in college, they do dance marathons. And then they go and they're you know successful. And they go into a job. We 
have them join what's called our I board. It's an innovative board. Mm-hmm. It's for younger professionals. And then from there, they go on to our board of directors or board of advocates. That way, we, what we've done is we've created lifelong donors who care about our mission. They understand it. They've been um, involved throughout their life. Right. So that's something that we've been trying to do lately, and it's been really successful. And that, like I said, doing something like that, it's, you know, it's something that even if when they're a kid and they're in school, right, and they donate a dollar a week, right, but it's just that mental thing in there. If you can get them on that train yep. and no notice, you know, they, they can see the impact and they can become part of this huge thing, even if it's just a dollar, right, and then it builds up and then when it's 10 a week and then it's, you know, whatever it is, it's all this stuff. And like I said, they go into a job and you have 25 years of them or, you know, whatever it is donating to you and you have a relationship for that time. It makes so much sense to build it like that, doesn't it? Yeah. And and what really, you know, if we get them on the hook, great. If not, what we've done is we've instilled a uh, Mm -hmm. a thought process or a mental process of philanthropy and and giving and service learning. And that's really what we're trying to do is – is just have an impact in the community and teach young kids that, you know, this is this is a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Giving to your local charities is a good thing to do because people need help. Yeah. And um, this is the way to be able to impact your community and get back. Mm. So for, I guess, the rest of the year, um, what, you know, what, what are you focusing on for the rest of the year? What's kind of like, I guess, specifically to your role? Yeah, you know? so um, right now we're looking at some major... Um, we have a, a bunch of our major events coming up. So Dancing for a Miracle, I'm gearing up for that. That'll be in August. Mm-hmm. Um, our fiscal year ends in March. So I'm oh, okay. trying to, you know, do our last appeals, sure. things like that um, for the fiscal year. But truly for me, what I'm focusing on is ramping up a, uh, a large campaign in cancer. Um, our organization will be trying to raise money to um, essentially replace our section chief for cancer mm. um, who was recruited from St. Jude. And, and so we're going to be doing a new recruiting um, base for a new section chief for that. But, you know, we're we're looking to raise money in all different areas. And so it's basically getting our name out there more. Um, you know, we have a couple programs that are on News Channel 4 right now. They're doing some um, series for us. One is called Kids with Courage. And they are basically showcasing the kids with cancer um, mm-hmm. up on the Jimmy Everest Cancer Center. Um, and then we also have a Heart for Kids, which is being um, aired on News Channel 4. And that's with Dr. Burkhart and mm-hmm. the kids that are, are receiving care from him. And so those alternate every Tuesday night. Um, so if you ever watch News Channel 4, Look for those uh, great stories, yeah. and you know we're we're really thankful for their partnership to be able to share these stories because I really think it's it's getting our name out to the community, what our doctors are doing, mm-hmm. and uh, how they can support it. But um, and then obviously I'm focusing on the Brandon Whedon Golf Tournament. Of course, I'm kind of yeah. in charge of that. Yeah, um, and that's June 4th, and that's at Oak Tree National. Uh, it's going to be the seventh or eighth year that we, that brandon's done it mm-hmm. um it's a great event yeah so much fun um and so i'm gearing up looking for team sponsorships mm-hmm. and, and people ways that people can support that and event. typical kind of golf tournament people hold sponsors and food yeah. sponsors and beverage yeah, sponsors so, and all that stuff uh, we're looking for beverage cart sponsors um you know driving range sponsor the teams, um, yeah. sponsorships go all the way from $3,600 up to $10,000 mm-hmm. for sponsorship as far as teams. That enters a four-man scramble. They get to go to the VIP reception um, and live auction. Yeah. And But it's cool. Brandon will be out there. It's not just for his name. Brandon's out there. He's interacting with the donors and the people that are there to mm-hmm. play. And, um, yeah, Dr. Burkhart will be out there. But the biggest thing about Brandon, uh, he's been such a good advocate for us. He's been doing PSAs, mm-hmm. and, um, really telling the story of why he got involved. Um, and that, that video is on our website as well. Um, it's the Brandon and Gavin video. And, um, man, if, if you get a chance to watch that, that's yeah. impactful. It's powerful. And Brandon you know, decided he wanted to raise a million dollars to bring someone here, and um, he's done it. We have Dr. Burkhart here, and now we have to continue to support Dr. Burkhart and what he's doing. Sure. Um, and so this is Brandon's way of saying, I'm going to raise another million dollars. To, to research and all the rest yeah, of it. Research, to keep, yeah, research, um, 
And Dr. Burkhardt's doing some really cool research right now um, as far as um, here on campus, and he's doing some things um, with the pediatric cardiothoracic surgery. Mm -hmm. And so we will continue to support those efforts. Um, I, I think maybe a couple years ago we were – turning kids away we couldn't we wouldn't perform the heart yeah. surgeries and so dr burkhart um, last year alone performed over 410 heart surgeries wow and um man he's busy yeah uh, he, he, he needs a uh, more more people he needs a bigger uh, place to be able to do what he's doing and we've got to be able to help provide those resources and so brandon's made a commitment to continue raising money and um, chf is is doing that alongside with him and mm -hmm. so um, the golf tournament's a really cool way to support, and I'm excited for it. And uh, hopefully, we can get you out there on a national. Yeah, that would be if I'm. We said it's in June. Yeah, June fourth. Okay, it's on a Thursday. Okay, um, and it's a man. It's it's a fun. Event. It should be a nice day. Hopefully, and, uh, <laughs> man. Normally, we, it, it depends. Yeah. Uh, it can be nice, but normally, you know, we're out sweating like no yeah. other, and uh, a lot of sunscreen too. Man, mm -hmm. we've we've been out there where it's been a little toasty, but. Uh, we're hoping it's going to be early enough in June sure. to where it's, it's not, not 115 degrees. Blazing, but yeah. you know, you know how Oklahoma is. We really don't know what the weather is going to look like. Sure. So. I mean, today it's snowing. Yeah, <laughs> it's all like trying to snow. Exactly. Um, this uh, this has been really cool. Like, I love diving into these stories, and I love that you know you you came here out of college. You've had this connection through you know family working at Walmart and and just being involved there, and then also like having that interaction with Jace and now you have a Jace of your own, right? And then yeah. having family that has to go through the stuff that you do every day, the work that you do, and you can see that impact personally yep. from a you know, family level as well as being around all these kids. So I love the story. I love what you're doing. Uh, I love your heart for it. You've got, um, you know, I can see just the passion that you have for this. This is, like I said, this is not just cashing a check. This is, and I don't think anyone here is doing that, right? If you work for a children's hospital foundation, you clearly love what you do. Yeah. Um, and I have family back home. My aunt, who's coming out soon, um, she is. She had two kidney transplants when she was well, first one first when she was eighteen. Uh, so I kind of have a little bit of experience around you know knowing what people have to go through with dialysis mm -hmm. and all. That. It is not easy, you know. And then having the donor and having the thankfully having a donor and and does that you know kidney take or does it reject yeah. the body and and all the complications that go around that. To, but I mean, she was. 18 to 30 yeah. having those I can't imagine what it's like for a kid you, you know, know you, you hit on a mic the one thing that's so interesting about this is these kids don't get to choose this life right you know and, and one one of the most impactful things that I heard um, from one of our board members who whose, ch whose daughter had cancer um, is he said you know childhood cancer these kids don't get to choose this it's mm -hmm. not something that they done and it's a consequence of where adult cancer it could have been smoking or whatnot yeah. but this is something they can't choose and, and and so it's like why not help right you know and, and so um you you hit on it but i, I do want to say sometimes i think we take for granted um our healthy children and so this is this is one way where you can take the good that you have in your life and really give back to somebody and these kids and i always say and give them a gift of growing up. Yeah. Yeah. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. And any dollar, I mean, every dollar counts. Every dollar raised by our foundation stays in the state of Oklahoma. It doesn't go to a national organization. Mm -hmm. And one thing I would like to mention is we don't turn a kid away from our program that we support. So no child is ever turned away, yeah. um, regardless of their ability to pay. Yeah. And so um, we're, we're sticking true to that. And, um, we love everyone's support, and if you have any questions, yeah, please visit our website. Yeah, the website's chfkids.com, uh, social media, Instagram's OKCHF. Definitely go follow that, and I'll post all these links below in the description as well if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're just listening, driving in the car. When you pull over, you can see the links below, and I'll also link the video for Brandon and Gavin as well that you mentioned. Um, and, yeah, if you want to reach out, come take a tour, come see what, you know, everything that, 
that they do and you can see where the money that you are donating is going uh you won't be disappointed it's uh it's definitely going to a good cause so jeremiah mate i really appreciate this thank you mike i appreciate you having me on glad to share the story and we'll definitely check back in you know uh after the golf tournament we'll see if we can get some prizes for that we'll see uh if not uh we'll definitely check in just to kind of keep up and see how things are going and just keep this a running commentary because I think any you know more voices and more exposure for this is needed. Uh, and anything I can do to help you guys, uh, I'd love to help. So maybe we can get Brandon on. That would be awesome. Let's de- definitely get him on to talk about that. I know he loves his golf. Yeah, he does. So awesome, mate. Really appreciate time. And guys listening, check all the links down below, and we will catch you next episode. Thanks very much. This podcast was presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who've been telling Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com and definitely on Instagram at oklahomahof catch you next episode cheers thank you for listening we are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories for more great Oklahoma content follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram